All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Intercosmos mod, which is being made by form user Well. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely little selection of science experiments for you to enjoy. And I mean, come on, who doesn't love an extra bit of science? So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. Now, I should point out something right off the pad here and that's the fact that uh, these parts may be familiar to any of you who currently use the KNES mod also made by well and that's because for the moment they are a part of that mod but well is in the process of removing them from that and bringing them into this branch mod focusing just on science parts and thus why we're here so let's grab ourselves a mark 1-3 command pod for for size comparison's sake, and then turn on our mod filter, leaving on Intercosmos, and finally head down to the science tab to see our six new experiments. Now I'm actually going to start down in this corner because I want to save this one for last because it's my personal favorite of the bunch, but all of them are good, fun, quality experiments, and in fact all based off of actual real world experiments, which I always find quite cool. Now the first one here is the photopolarimeter, which I'm actually surprised I said correctly that time. It keeps... It keeps getting me with that name. But it is a lovely little experiment there that does have a moving part. It's kind of hard to see here right now in the vehicle assembly building, but there's a little nub thing there that when the experiment is activated, will rotate down to here, which is quite a nice little touch. Now, not all of these parts do have animations, but some of them do, and it's just, you know, nice little touches to give it a, bit, a better feel as if it's doing something, which I do appreciate. And this photopolarimeter will, of course, log data. Now, the next one we have is the photometer, which this one will also log data. And there we are, if we pop that on, it's just a nice looking thing with some fun little tubes. And one of the things I really do like about all of these parts, oh well, except for the... Um, crystallization facility is they are all of the same sort of size and shape with the exception of of course the little bit popping out that actually holds the sort of viewable experiment it's very nice to have that sort of uniformity between the parts so you always know where you can fit these things now the next experiment which of course also will log data is the IR spectrometer and uh, there we are another lovely part we then have the hydrometer which will once more log data and there it is there and then we have the gas analyzer which this one too will log data and uh, there it goes that one also does have a fun little animation that little nozzle there opens up to of course take in the gas to then analyze and finally we have the crystallization facility which like the others will log data as you can see right there good to be able to do that and it is of course much larger than the other experiments and has something unique about it it's a resource converter creating a new resource that is just chock full of science and that is the crystal it is a pretty cool little thing it'll take electric charge at 0.1 per second and turn that into 2.16 crystals per day so it is going to use not a whole lot of electricity but a whole tiny amount of it over a very long period of time to create a maximum of 50 crystals that this thing can hold and Oh boy, once you got 50 crystals, you're going to want to return it to the planet because once your ship has been recovered, that 50 crystals is worth 5,000 science, which may sound a bit cheaty, but personally I think it's a pretty balanced thing because, well, not only is it very slow to produce them, taking a little bit over 24 days to actually make all the crystals, but then, I mean, if it's on a satellite or something, you gotta have it return the crystals. So it actually does make you go through a bit of a process to get all that science. Now, of course, you could just slap it on a small rover and park it outside the, uh, the launch pad, but still, you had to make a thing. And that's why I think it's actually pretty well balanced. Now let's actually go out to the launch pad to look at these things in action because, well, not... 
really much else to do with them. They're science experiments. I was tempted to make a satellite or something, but, I mean... It'd be the exact same look and feel if we just were here looking at these glorious, beautiful things. So there are our science experiments, and let's take a look at all of them in use. Now first, the crystallization facility. We can, of course, log the data. The light goes on, and we get a nice little crystal experiment. And although the presence of chloride is not Indicated by the chemical formula, these crystals grow only when there are enough chloride ions present to stabilize its structure. And we can, of course, transmit that, keep that, or reset the experiment. And that, of course, the logging data, but we can also start crystallization. And as you can see there, the uh, texture of the crystals inside does begin to change, and it will actually change over time as the crystals actually grow, which I think is a really cool addition. You are seeing them grow right before your eyes right now, and I, I really, really like that. I think it's a fun little touch, and it just keeps resetting, and like I said, will produce Oh, what was a 2.16 per day? So it's a. Uh it's going to take a while, but it will get there. Now, the next experiment, of course, the hydrometer there. And the particle size analysis reveals that 80% were smaller than around 60 microns and 40% were smaller than around 10 microns. Perfect. Let's then do the gas analyzer. The little nozzle opens up and we expose the gas samples to the environment, taking notes of how it behaves. Reset that one. We then, if we zoom in, watch the little the little knob there. Log that one, and there it goes moving. And sadly, no special text on this one. But we did, you know, get science. Not not in this game, actually, since I'm just in sandbox. But you normally would get science. Now, next we have the photometer. There we are, lighting up there. And calculations based on the pre-flight film calibration indicate that particles as small as 25. I'm suddenly forgetting what that symbol is. Oh, that's bad because I use that at work. <laughs> Can be detected from ideal observing conditions. Oh, I'm going to get crap for that tomorrow at work. And there we go. Reset that experiment. And finally, the IR spectrometer. There we are, a little whirling around, and the infrared part shows complex cloud structures revealed by a thermal radiation coming up from different atmospheric depths. Perfect, lovely, lovely little flavor text for all of them, and of course, all useful in different biomes, and this one slowly but surely creating crystals. Look at that, we've produced 0 0.01 crystals. Yay, isn't it great? And all in all, it's a, just a fun little mod of science parts, and I'm very intrigued to see what happens with this mod now that Well has pulled these, or at least is in the process of pulling these from KNES into their own branched off mod. I'm intrigued to see what else we may get. But that is going to be it for the time being. If you all would like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next, but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always... Have a good one.